Ah, summer. Long, hot days, endless sunshine, and lots of electric car range too. Yep, all that's gone now as we head into winter, but it's not all bad news because something really cool arrived for me from the USA. Here is my new OBD link connector and hopefully this one works in my car. To find out, I plugged it in and after four months of failed attempts with cheap Chinese OBD connectors, something pretty awesome happened. Oh, look at that! It works! I've got everything! Oh, that's brilliant! Oh, cause that's so cool! Oh, that actually shows stuff at last, woohoo! The new connector and the Can I on smartphone application lets you see everything going on in the car from heater power, regen braking, RPM, you name it. So I took the car for a spin to see exactly how much power it uses at 50 kilometers per hour. Well, it turns out not very much, about one and a half cents per kilometer on our power rate. So what about expressway speed? And in Slovakia, that's 130 kilometers per hour or 81 miles per hour. Of course, there's really only one way to find out. As you can imagine, this little city car was way out of its comfort zone and really uneconomical at high speed, using around 250 watt hours or about 3 cents per kilometer. But even at this high speed, it still works out only half the price per mile as a shiny new Volkswagen Jetta TDI. Plus, in an electric car, you can drive easy knowing you're not producing any of those now famous Volkswagen emissions. And this got me thinking. Imagine if my electric car was actually powered by gas. Believe it or not, this really happened. This model of car was first released as a gas car called the Mitsubishi I, built with a 660cc turbo gas engine. Thankfully they've stopped making these, but it got me wondering which is quicker, the electric version or the gas turbo version? And as usual, there was only one way to find out. Okay, zero to a hundred. Yep, the electric version walks all over the gas version, but there's something the gas version has that mine doesn't. An exhaust pipe. And considering my car's first safety and emission inspection is coming up, I thought I'd better install one to be safe. Okay, so now I'm going to connect all this up together and have a system that allows me to produce smoke, well, steam. So it'll look just like a gas car. Still not quite sure why I'm doing this, but it's fun. So, here's my simple system, kettle, pipe, turn it on, cover it up, and now we wait. With my fake exhaust system set up, I fired up the stereo and chose the authentic sound of a typical internal combustion engine. The result really wasn't amazing and I realized I was being stupid so I removed everything and took my car for its first safety inspection test. And as I suspected my fears were confirmed. My car actually turned out to be the very first electric car they'd ever tested. The joys of being a pioneer, huh? The first electric car they've seen yet. After a bit of confusion on how to emission test a car with its exhaust pipe missing, they checked out the lights and put the car on the brake testing machine. The front and rear brakes were perfect, so next they positioned the car over an inspection pit to check the suspension and frame from underneath. This is where I sweet-talked my way into the pit to have a look from underneath, because I mean, how often do you get to see your car from the underside? I couldn't pass that up. Before I knew it, my car had passed its first safety inspection that given me a shiny new sticker, but at that moment my joy turned to sorrow as I discovered this. A massive deep scratch on the car that wasn't there the day before. It's, uh, it's a serious scratch, it goes right down to the metal. It's insane. It's like something metal has hit it by the looks of things. I don't think it's vandalism, I think something's whacked the car by mistake. Uh, I don't know. I tried to retrace my steps to find out exactly where it happened, starting with the car park outside my work. I remember that I was parked here, but I don't remember that fence to the neighbouring construction site being broken. So I checked my dashcam footage from the day it happened when I came to work, and look there. 
You can just see in that gap there were fence panels there, but the next day those fence panels and those posts were pushed over, probably so people could access the site to walk their dogs. Then when I looked from the other side of the fence, I noticed something. See that metal post? Well, look closer. That's red paint, just like my cars. Anyway, what was done was done, so I called the insurance company and went to the police station to file a report. All right, now we go through the joy of filling out the claim form in order to get the car fixed using the insurance. Fun way to spend a Friday night. The police were helpful and we got the paperwork done, then I changed focus onto something more fun. Putting the car in the garage and preparing it for winter, starting with cleaning the wheel covers for my winter wheels and tyres. Turns out that my grey wheel covers that came with the car are actually white. Next I got out the winter wheels and tyres, and this is where you can see the difference in size between the front and rear tyres. The front tyres are 145 65s and the rear tyres are 175 55s. Then with the help of a 21mm socket I loosened the wheel nuts and drank about 18 cups of coffee, which allowed me to go really really fast but somehow made my car a little bit orange. Then I pumped up the winter tyres. Then I cleaned up my summer wheels and tyres thoroughly and put them into storage for the winter. This only left the installation of my ugly wheel covers before showing you just how bad my car will look for the next four months. Yeah, the next day we dropped the car off to get that mega scratch sorted out at the local Škoda dealer, which was pretty painless, but it did mean I had to adapt to a completely different form of transport until it was fixed. Well, now I'm using a different form of transport now that my car is being fixed. It's a form of transport that's not as fast as my electric car, not as cheap as my electric car, and possibly not even as clean as my electric car. Yep, that's a bus stop behind me. For the next few days I'm going to be using the bus. The buses here in Bratislava are clean and comfortable with air conditioning, Wi-Fi and TVs, but if you have an electric car, you'll understand. Once you go electric, you won't want to go back. Plus, at 90 cents per bus journey versus 19 cents for the same distance in my electric car, there is no comparison. So when my car was ready to be picked up, I was kind of looking forward to it. I'm on the way to pick up my electric car. It's been seven days without my electric baby. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh yeah. I'm back in my car. I am driving in the 21st century again. Oh god, it feels so good to have my wheels back. My baby, I'll never leave you again. Well, the painters have done a really good job. It's come up like new. In fact, maybe even better than new. In fact, it's really good. Amazingly good. Too good. What are you doing? Just polishing the car. With your lips? Yeah. Well, that's the end of another video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it was fun and entertaining. Uh, the next video should be fun because we're going to find out how this little car survives in the winter. Speaking of which, we're about to get on a plane and fly to New Zealand to have Christmas in summer. The way Christmas should be, right? No. Nope. Uh, we'll never agree on that. All right, until the next Kiwi EV, see you later. By the way, I put the design for my car's 100% electric sticker on KiwiEV.com for anyone to download for free. I realised a lot of people don't know the car's electric, and there's a shortage of simple but cool electric car stickers out there, so I made this one on a transparent background for anyone to use, so help yourself.